Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your Wednesday. Don't forget that we have meme review over on our second channel, Brainus. You could go check that out so you can see some tech memes and laugh at your sorrow because you can't get a 3080. That's the best way to do life. And also apologies if my face is a little blotchy. I'm running and now I'm do filming very soon after. Good splotchy, Dr. Splotchy. And that doesn't look good for my skin complexion, but you know what does look good for me? Today's video is sponsored. Hey friends, today's video partner is Vessi, specifically their brand new weekend shoes, which I absolutely love because not only do they look stylish, but they allow me to jump in whatever random Publix puddle I find on my way back to my car because it's just amazing to have a waterproof, slush proof, slip proof shoe from Vessi that looks this good, but still provides you with all of the classic Vessi innovative features, such as the waterproofness, as well as the fact that they're 100% vegan and made from a dual climate knit material that keeps the shoe comfortable and breathable, whether it's in the summer keeping you cool or warm in the winter, which I'm in Florida, so I don't even have to worry about that. My typical shoes that I've worn have always torn apart from being out in the elements too much. And thankfully with the Vessi weekend shoes, I don't have to worry as much about them. I don't have to deal with soggy feet after going outside. I don't have to worry about whether or not my socks need to be replaced. These weekend shoes make sure that my feet stay all cozy and warm and then I'm good even when I take them off. You can click the link in the video description and use my code UFD to save $25 off your pair of Vessi's new weekend shoes. I love them. I'm glad that I have them. And and they're my new uh, go-to for trying to look good, but also making sure that I don't have to worry about what happens on top of the shoe because my inside little feetsies are gonna stay all nice and warm and bundled. So check out the Vessi Weekend Shoe at the link in the video description, coupon code UFD to save $25 off. Check it, friends. Now let's go ahead and talk about what everybody is waiting for, a cheaper version of the RTX 30 series. Excuse me, sorry, I just mean available RTX 30 series. Anyways, there's some indication that there might be an RTX 3060 Ti coming out according to several different reports that are out there. However, we have more conflicting reports that are also showing up. So we're going to dive all into that video card showing off that there might be an RTX 3060 Ti with 4,864 CUDA cores and eight gigabytes of GDDR6 coming in at the 399 price point, which if you compare that to the 3070, it actually isn't that far from what a 3070 is. So you could get near 3070 level performance for $100 less and have the say eight gigabytes of memory and all of that. Hopefully this actually pans out, but we have more information about that because Gigabyte actually released some information that they probably shouldn't have, which shows that there is an RTX 3060 and see right there, Siegel model, as well as an RTX 3080 20 gigabyte model, which should be coming out, which I know a lot of people are a little sad at the VRAM amounts of the 3080. So getting that 20 gigabytes might be good for you. And that's not the only company that leaked their roadmap, Galax confirming a RTX 3060. So maybe not an RTX 3060 Ti, but still very close in performance. As we can see here, not only does Galax's roadmap show us the actual name of these things, but then the performance, the RTX 3060 coming in nearly identical with a 2080, the 3070 obviously being right about a 2080 Ti. Then this PG142 SQU0 is supposed to be a 3070 Ti potentially, or just a 3070 16 gig, which is the idea. And then the RTX 3080 20 gig. It's not yet known whether the 3070 with 16 gigs and the 3080 with 20 gigs are going to feature any more CUDA cores. But the idea is that we are going to get more cards and at a different launch window. So that is the general idea. NVIDIA is holding on to these cards until AMD launches Big Navi so that they can continue to smash them in the face is the general idea. The 3070 with 16 gigs is supposed to be 499, which is confusing because then they'd have to drop the price of the 8 gig 3070 to probably like 449 then the 3060 is at 399 that could potentially shake up the market hugely and make pc builds between 800 and a thousand dollars wildly variable depending on what you're going to spend other things of money on you could potentially get a 3070 ti or 3060 if you choose to spend more on your case or whatnot Anyways, that's going to be wild. So the anticipated release date, obviously tomorrow, we're expecting a 3090, which we're going to talk about in a little while. The 3080 20 gig comes after Big Navi, RTX 3070 Ti comes after Big Navi, and then the 3060 Ti slash Super will come out at an unknown date. It's hard to say when that's going to take place, but what we do know is that RTX 3098 k gameplay footage sponsored by NVIDIA took place with both Linus and MKBHD dropping a midnight Pacific release of playing on 8K in the RTX. RTX 3090, which makes sense that it was only these two who kind of got the sponsored video because they had to give them a $30,000 8K OLED from LG, which means that they need the ROI to be massive and 
creators with over 10 million subs. Like that, that makes a lot of sense, but that's not the only 3090 news we got. Now we have detailed pricing of the third party models of the 3090 coming out with the ROG Strix being $1,800. If we just scroll on over here to the Best Buy website, online only, as you can see right here for the 3090, which is good. That tells me I don't have to go into the store tomorrow. $1,500 for the 3090 founders, 18 for the Strix, and then between uh, around 15 to $1,600 for the rest of the cards lineup. But we also have some performance indication of the mining performance of the RTX 3090, showing that it can hit around 120 hash at 100% power limit, and then the 3080 is at 80. So you get about a 50% boost by going to the 3090. But as you can see here, by just uh, undervolting and reducing the power draw of the 3080, you can maintain that 80 mega hash for a while. So it's hard to say whether or not the 3090 is going to have that same benefit. I've heard some reports that you can drop the power draw of the 3090 by about 10% and still get the same gaming performance. So we'll have to see if that pans out to be true. And I want this to be true. And Galax, please, I want to build blocks with this Galax unveiling the RTX 3090 gamer with a Lego brick inspired uh, shroud, which is just very intriguing. It's uh, it's unique for sure. The red, white and blue is kind of, you know, its own thing, even though this is audacious and it kind of has Nintendo Switch colors. I kind of like Good job, Galax, for stepping outside the box on this one. I appreciate it. And gamers with LG OLED TVs might appreciate the fact that LG is apparently working on a firmware to fix the C9 and CX issues where you can only get 4K 120 with Chrome sampling 422 instead of the full color range of 444. This is according to HDTV Test, who says that he spoke to LG and they should be coming out with a fix sometime soon. Then let's talk about Moore's Law is Dead, who posted a picture of the upcoming GA102 48 gigabyte Q6000 Quadro card out coming from NVIDIA. This is the Ampere Quadro card, which is likely going to set you back quite a bit of cash. It is, it is massive, 16 gigabit per second memory, 48 gigabytes of it, yowza, large. It's only slightly more powerful than the 3090 in the CUDA core section, but double the memory has full NVLink. So you could actually potentially, at least according to what I can think, put two of these together and get a 96 gigabyte VRAM setup insane. I'd probably expect that this would come in, in the four to $5,000 region. I might be mistaken there. I'm not sure uh, what NVIDIA is going to price Quadros at, but I know what Tesla is going to price their Model S Plaid at, and that is $139,000 to start because this is an insane car, 520 miles of range, under two seconds, zero to 60, 200 miles per hour, top speed, and also completed the Laguna Seca in a really, really good time. They're also saying that the quarter mile should be under nine seconds, which is crazy. And the only thing that's beyond ludicrous is Plaid. That's obviously a reference to Spaceballs, which is, happens to be one of my favorite movies as a kid. I love it. So good job, Tesla, announcing that. I kind of believe that they were going to do this. We, if you remember, Tesla was working on the Model S at Nürburgring a while ago to try to beat the Porsche Taycan numbers. And it seems like they did it by introducing a third drivetrain, which is what the Plaid is for, but then also with more battery capacity, which gives you that 520 mile range. But that's not the only th big thing that came out of Tesla's battery day yesterday. Elon Musk saying that they're about three years away from coming out with a $25,000 fully autonomous vehicle, which would actually be amazing because they found a way to have the cost per kilowatt hour of the batteries in their car, which could potentially lead to a much cheaper mass market vehicle. $25,000 for a Model 3-ish car that's fully self-driving, that's it's gonna change the future. Maybe we won't get it in three years. It's kind of like on an Elon time frame, So, you know, it's he's probably eventually going to do it, but you could probably expect that it's gonna be in more like four to five year region, but still $25,000 mass market, fully self-driving uh, electric vehicle. I can't think of anything that's gotten me more excited <clears throat> in the world of cars than that. And a lot of people got excited when Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 came out, and then they got de-excited when they realized that their computers performed like crap. But thankfully, Microsoft released a patch, which now apparently gives you about 10% extra performance in the game in case you were struggling with that. You're still going to need a 3090 to get anywhere near 60 FPS at decent details, but it'll exist. And what's existing is the expansion card for the Xbox Series S and X, which has a price of 160 pounds, according to a retailer in the UK who leaked that. So one terabyte for $160 PCI Express 4.0. That checks out. It's a little bit more expensive than uh, I think I would like to pay, but that obviously hopefully will come down with time. But speaking of SSD, Samsung sending out reviews of their 980 Pro PCI Express 4.0 SSD, Anon Tech getting their hands on one of them. And 
them specifically saying that is top shelf, no drama, seven gigabytes per second, read and write. It is insanely fast. It is going to be one of the best mass market consumer SSDs that you could get. Hopefully this is something that you'll be able to slot into your PS5 to expand on the storage. One terabyte of that would be beautiful. And then something else that launched yesterday was Elgato's ring light. I actually didn't see that much uh, when researching for hot news on this. It seems like this is uh, just a really expensive ring light. I guess Elgato is trying to get in on that TikTok vibe. I'm not sure why you would need a ring light instead of their key light or their key light air for filming videos. I it, This is just a different thing. It's $200, which is quite expensive, but it does integrate with their stream deck and uh, I can pick it up today at Gainesville. Hey, look at that. I could get one today. I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna go anywhere near this because I don't live on that side of the world anymore, but it's definitely gonna light up just like the Elgato ring light. And that's the next US particle accelerator will be built on Long Island by 2031. The Brookhaven National Laboratory in Log Island began work to actually build the new electron ion collider, which can smash things together and make gluons and quarks and all of the brilliant stuff that was the early matter at the beginning of the universe. And just like the beginning of the universe, it had to stop at some point. And so I'm going to stop now with this episode of Hot News. Don't forget about today's video sponsor. Don't forget about today's video sponsor, Vessied. You can use coupon code UFD to save $25. Link in the video description. Do it. We can choose. Looking stylish and waterproof and vegan and slip proof. That they're, they're just fantastic shoes. Check them. And that's going to be it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode of Hot News. Don't forget to check out our second channel, Brainus, where we have meme review. And then also yesterday, I posted my review of the Ryzen 7 4750G. That is the Zen 2 APU that came out that I had to purchase from Hong Kong. So you can check our second channel for that. And you can check us on Twitch for live streaming. And check me out of here because I am not stopping rambling about the things you can do. So just stop.